Good evening. The year 2020 taught us just how much our space matters. Many of us realize just how holy our sanctuaries are for us when we are unable to physically gather within them. However, this season has also reminded us that God does not reside in any one place, for God is everywhere, and God promises to draw near to us wherever we may be. And so, as we begin, I invite you to mark your space so that your soul knows wherever you are, this is is holy ground. To mark your sacred space, I suggest lighting a candle. Maybe find a a pillow on the floor to sit on or to settle yourself into your favorite chair. And gather some supplies, a candle and a lighter, a pen, a piece of paper, or a journal, or even a printed copy of our Ash Wednesday doodle page. Also, we will be partaking in communion this evening, so be sure to have communion elements ready. They can be whatever you have on hand to eat and drink, just something that will be meaningful to you in this moment. And most importantly, turn your phone notifications off so that you can be truly present to this time and space. Take a few deep breaths in and out. And now repeat to yourself. I am here. God is here. This space is holy ground. I am here. God is here. This space is holy ground.
Let us pray. To make this a kinesthetic prayer, I invite you now to write down on your piece of paper or on your journal or on your doodle page any of the phrases from this prayer that particularly move you or stand out to you. So let us pray. Creator God, there is a rumbling in us that won't let go. It stirs in us like the wind stirs leaves, inviting us to move, drawing us forth. When we're quiet, we know that rumble is the Holy Spirit. Dancing love awaken us. So we're here. And we're still. And we're quiet. And on this first day of Lent, we are asking you to draw near. As we hear your scripture read aloud, open the door for us to move. Invite us in. Rumble us awake. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. And now a reading from the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 19b. From dust you came, unto dust you shall return. This verse spoken to us when we receive the imposition of ashes on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday reminds us of our humanity. So, in full honesty, I invite you now to make a list of five to ten challenges that you are struggling with, recognizing that life is messy and life is complicated. Name anything that is hard or heavy in this moment and write them down in your journal or on your paper, or on your doodle page. Challenge yourself to think of the core emotion underlying each of these challenges. For example, instead of just saying, I'm busy, perhaps you might confess, I overcommit myself because I worry that others will think I'm selfish if I say no. We'll have some time now with some music to name your challenges and your confessions, offering them all to God. Today, I tasked the Sunday schoolers with illustrating or drawing their challenges in life. They were also asked to reflect on problems they see in the world that they hope to help change. Now it is your turn, the congregation. What challenges are you facing in your life? What problems do you see in the world that you hope to help change? Just like the Sunday Schoolers, I'm asking you to write or illustrate these reflections. Whatever feels more natural to you and share them with Pastor JT and I.
take a moment now and look over your list and ask God for forgiveness for the things you can control. Ask God for grace for the things you cannot control. Our God is intimately aware of our humanity in the many ways we fall short or get stuck in the weeds of our own problems. Having confessed and written down some of the challenges that weigh heavily on us, hear the following poem as a reminder of God's grace. Hear this poem, Invited, written by Sarah R. I like to imagine that each year God invites me to a party. God drops me a note that says, no gifts, casual dress, come just as you are. I like to imagine that I am brave enough to go. I like to imagine that I decide I am worth it. This is no pity invite. There is no obligatory postage. God wants me to be there. So I get myself together. Smudged glasses, sensitive ego, wrinkled shirt and all. I ring the doorbell a few minutes late on account of the fact that I lost my keys twice trying to get out the door. And I almost turn back to hide in my car. Afraid that I might embarrass myself over appetizers or small talk. But then God answers the door and God says, you're here. And I smile because I am. And with every step past that threshold, I know that God is cheering me on. It's the pride of a parent watching their child take their first step. If I freeze, God is not disappointed. If I fall, God is not mad. But if I trust this invitation, if I move closer, I know God celebrates. Friends, you've got mail. It's an invitation to dust off your shoes, to go deeper, to trust that you're worth it, to lose your keys and your faith, and then to find them both along with your worth. You are invited. We are invited again and again and again. This invitation is for you. Our book for Ash Wednesday is What Do You Do With an Idea by Kobe Yamada. Not only is the writing in this book amazing, but the illustrations are as well. While I'm reading, I want you to think about any ideas, hopes, and dreams that you have as real life tangible things. Enjoy! One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered. What do you do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it, so I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me. But, it followed me. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit, I felt better and happier when it was around.
It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger, and we became friends. I showed it to other people even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. They said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and that it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. I decided to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food, I worked with it, I played with it, but most of all, I gave it my attention. My idea grew and grew, and so did my love for it. I built a new house, one with an open roof where it could look up at the stars, a place where it could be safe to dream. I liked being with my idea. It made me feel more alive, like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big, and then to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands, because, it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then, one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread, it spread its wings, took flight, and burst into the sky. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just a part of me anymore. It was now a part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. The end. Having read scripture and poetry, named the challenges you are facing, and heard this invitational story, now Write down five to ten hopes you have for this Lenten season. Allow this story to be encouragement for living life with intention. You can write your hopes in your journal or on your piece of paper or on your doodle page. And as you write, consider these written hopes to be intentions that you are setting for the next six weeks ahead for this season of Lent. These are not intended to be aimless wishes on stars, but instead thoughtful intentions for your one wild and precious life. You'll have some time now to think and to write while some music plays.
Ash Wednesday is a special day because it marks the start of something new. We are standing at the door of a journey into deeper faith, and God is inviting us in. However, we know that we cannot grow deeper and be transformed without God's help. So as we begin this season, we confess together, asking for God's participation in this new beginning. We are asking God to hold open the door. So let us confess together. As we pray this prayer of confession, please take a moment between each petition to reflect and lift your own prayer to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we know that you are near, for you are always here, gathered among us just a breath away. And despite knowing your nearness, we still stumble over ourselves, unsure of how to pray, bring our hearts into the room. So often we talk to you like a stranger, praying prayers of small talk about the weather and surface level concerns. We keep genuine fear and doubt tucked into corners, out of sight, out of mind. Bring our hearts into the room. And so often, we try to think our way to you as if we could use logic or our minds alone to explain your great unknown. We forget what we knew as children. We forget how to feel our way to you. Bring our hearts into the room. And too regularly, we limit our experience of you to one hour a Sunday, missing your constant invitation into the holiness all around us. Forgive us, guide us, bring our hearts into the room. We are here, God. We want to begin again. Bring our hearts into the room. Amen. Friends, whether you are standing at the door of a deeper faith journey, unsure of what comes next, or running your way through that threshold, you are claimed, forgiven, and loved by God. Again and again, we are forgiven. Again and again, we are loved. Again and again. We are invited in. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Hear now the words of affirmation of our faith. We believe in an inviting God who invites the poor and the sick, the outcast and the lonely, the immigrant and the refugee, the awkward and the abrasive, the young and the innocent. We believe God invites the best and the worst in all of us. We believe God invites us to a life of faith, a crowded table, a messy church, a resilient joy, a deeper truth, a place to belong, a family among strangers, a world that is just, and the love that knows no bounds. We believe this invitation exists for all people we believe this invitation exists for us. And when we miss the call or ignore the invite, we believe that God invites us again. Thanks be to God for that invitational spirit. Amen. <laughs>
we've come to our time of communion this evening, and so I invite you to make sure that you have your elements in front of you, your bread and your cup, whatever they may be, so that we can join in this sacrament together. Ordinary bread made by ordinary people is holy when we take and eat and remember. Ordinary grapes taken by ordinary people and made into an ordinary cup are holy when we hold the cup to our lips and drink and remember. This bread, remember his body was given for us. This cup, remember his blood was poured out for us. Bread and cup from ordinary to holy, remember. Let us pray. Holy God, for creating the world and breathing into us the breath of life, we offer you our thankful praise. For redeeming us through Jesus Christ, forgiving our sins, and offering new life forever, we offer you our thankful praise. For strengthening us by your Holy Spirit, who lives within us, close as breath itself, we offer you our thankful praise. Eternal God, as we gather around this table and every table that is in front of us, set with bread and the fruit of the vine, we remember that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, He broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the covenant, the new covenant, sealed in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Merciful God, by your word and Holy Spirit, bless these gifts and bless your people that we may receive Christ's body and blood given for us. Amen. The bread of life for you. Loving God and Jesus Christ, with gratitude for your holy nourishment about this table, we dedicate our lips to be the hopeful voice of Christ to the despairing, our hands to reach out in Christ's name to heal the broken, our feet to walk with Christ to visit those who are shunned, our bodies to be Christ's living sacrifice to break the power of death. Take us, empower us, and use us again and again. Amen.
Let us pray. And to make this a kinesthetic prayer, I invite you now to write down any phrases or words that particularly move you or stand out to you. You can use your journal or piece of paper or doodle page. So let us pray together. God of open doors, open arms, and open conversations. We know deep in our souls that you are forever inviting us in. Again and again, you invite us to take another step closer, another step deeper, another step further in this journey of faith. So with your invitation in our hands, we pray for strength and wisdom. Show us the next right step in this journey. We are here. You are here. This is holy ground. May this holy Lenten journey begin once again. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Now, as you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May our arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage Go with heart, go in peace. Friends, our worship is over. Let our service begin. Amen. <laughs>